I'm Marty Stauffer. Which of our states has the prettiest women, the toughest cowboys, and the widest, wide open spaces? Opinions may differ, but not among Texans. Almost any resident of the Lone Star State would claim that Texas has the largest and best of just about everything, including storytellers. Be that as it may, Texas is the largest of the nation's lower 48 states. And it does have our greatest variety of wildlife habitat, from the desert mountains of West Texas to the pine forests in the east, and from the flat plains of the northern panhandle to the marshlands of the Gulf Coast. This amazing diversity of landscape can be divided into six major areas, desert, hill country, brush country, open country, forest, and swamp. We all know Texas as the home of the armadillo, but many other kinds of wild creatures can also be found here. Some as common as the chipmunk, others as rare as the golden-cheeked warbler. Y'all come along now, and we'll explore wild Texas. Some of the most spectacular scenery in the state is found near the western boundary of Texas in the dry desert mountains near the Rio Grande River. Big Bend National Park protects a number of endangered plants and animals. Among them is the colorful Texas madrone, a beautiful tree whose seedlings no longer survive in the wild. The once abundant white-winged dove finds refuge in the park while its statewide population dwindles each year. The mountains of the Trans-Pecos Desert are dry, but the canyon bottoms are lush with life, fed by streams and springs. The barn swallow feeds on a plentiful supply of insects and finds mud with which to build a nest high up under a nearby canyon rim. One of the most striking natives of this region is the gray banded or Blair's kingsnake. It has a habit of constricting and devouring rattlesnakes to whose venom it's immune. But to humans, this snake is as harmless as it is handsome. The kingsnakes come together to mate in early spring when the desert air is sweet with the fragrance of blooming flowers.
North of Big Bend, Guadalupe Mountains National Park includes towering El Capitan, and behind it, Guadalupe Peak, the highest point in Texas. The remote Guadalupes are a refuge for some of the wildest animals in Texas, animals who will disappear before they ever learn to live with man. Black bears and bobcats, as well as cougars, are found here. But the cougar is one of the most elusive of all wild animals and is rarely seen. Seeps and springs dot this dry area, making it the ideal place to raise a litter, since the mother does not have to go far to hunt. And for the kittens, it's a natural playground. The mother cougar has little trouble finding a secure and roomy den. The Guadalupes are made of limestone, which readily forms caves. Such caves are another reason why the Guadalupes are an ideal habitat for this great cat. Another creature that makes good use of caves is the Mexican free-tail bat. Four caves in Texas are known for their huge bat populations. Split by the magnificent gorge of Palo Duro Canyon, the flat, open country of the Texas Panhandle is not entirely flat. But it is open and it supports its own unique blend of wildlife. The striped skunk is a common resident. Less common is the swift fox, a small, shy canid that lives on insects, scorpions, lizards, and especially rodents. As fast and agile as its name implies, the swift fox is ideally suited to hunt the plains and canyons of open country. It has no enemies but man, for few creatures can outrun it. The skunk, too, has few enemies, but for a different reason. It's interesting to me that not just humans, but almost all animals are repelled by the smell of a skunk. Many animals feed at night and, like these bats, return at dawn to their daytime hiding places. The skies of open country are as important to wildlife as the land. On the staked plains are two national wildlife refuges, both havens for migrating waterfowl.
In winter, the refuge at Mule Shoe attracts the country's largest concentration of sandhill cranes, sometimes a hundred thousand of them. The canyons and gullies of open country shelter another unusual creature, the reclusive ringtail. The coyote is primarily a scavenger that will eat almost anything, but it's also a clever hunter with a keen nose. It seems impossible that any creature could survive such treatment, but the ringtail is a fighter. Even so, escape is another matter. As small as it is, the ringtail still has sharp little teeth. And as tough as it is, the coyote still has a tender nose. By now it's obvious that the ringtail is not going to be the coyote's next meal. The coyote leaves to hunt easier prey. Its normal diet is smaller mammals and rodents. Safe for now, the ringtail stays close to its den. In spite of this close call, a ringtail can usually find secure shelter in these rocky outcroppings. In central Texas, the hill country of the Edwards Plateau is swept by breezes and softened by cedars. The increasingly rare golden-cheeked warbler is said to nest nowhere else in the world but here. This specialized bird builds its nest of cedar bark. As land is cleared for grazing, the warbler simply disappears. Hill country sparkles with some of the clearest waters in the nation. These streams and springs are sometimes the only habitat of specially evolved fishes. Many clear, warm water springs in this area provide recreational spots for humans. As long as they remain free flowing and unpolluted, such springs can be shared by wildlife and humans alike. Hill country contains many outcroppings of colorful granite, of which the best known is the pink dome of enchanted rock. This pink granite was used for the Texas State Capitol at Austin, by far the largest state capitol building in the country. Between the open prairie and the eastern forest lies an unusual area called the Cross Timbers.
Grassland has replaced much of what used to be long fingers of forest, reaching north-south into the prairie. Once, the cross timbers were the haunt of deer, black bear, and wild hogs. Now, only birds and small mammals remain. The trees in the cross timbers provide nesting places for many types of birds, while the interspersed grasslands offer a rich diet of insect life. As its name implies, the scissor-tailed flycatcher's primary diet is insects. The female seems to be having trouble, though, convincing her babies that mulberries are also a suitable food. Meanwhile, the male continues to hunt in the fields nearby for their standard fare. With its long, elegantly forked tail, the flycatcher is the ultimate in grace on the wing. The tail opens in flight like a pair of scissors, providing perfect balance in motion. Both male and female take turns feeding the young, folding their tails as they perch at the nest. During courtship, the male performs a breathtaking sky dance, tumbling and somersaulting from a hundred feet in the air. With young already in the nest, their dance is more subdued, yet still an aerial ballet. Two hundred years ago, a squirrel could have traveled all the way from the Atlantic Ocean to the forests of East Texas without ever touching the ground. In Mississippi and Alabama, much of that original forest is gone. But in the big thicket and the piney woods of East Texas, wildlife still interacts in timeless ways. Fox squirrel shares this area of oak hickory habitat with a colony of honeybees. The forest floor is home for another small mammal, the eastern cottontail rabbit. Though these two animals are similar in size, they do not compete. The cottontail eats primarily green vegetation, 
while the fox squirrel comes to the ground to search for nuts. Much of this pine and hardwood forest is now grown for harvest, but in some areas, old growth is preserved. The combination of old and new forest land ensures habitat for the great variety of plants and animals essential to any healthy ecosystem. East Texas is as wet as West Texas is dry. Toward the Gulf Coast, forest gives way to cypress swamp. The armadillo's expanding range includes most of Texas, but it thrives especially well in these wetlands. The odd-looking armadillo is a master of survival. Its flesh is tender and tasty, but its tough leathery shell proves impenetrable even to the powerful jaws of this young cougar. The brush country on the Rio Grande Plain of South Texas is dense with shrubs as tall as trees. This area provides good cover for many unusual birds. Among them is the chachalaca, a noisy, gregarious bird common at the Santa Ana Wildlife Refuge. Other colorful residents of brush country include the Altamira Oriole and the brilliant green jay. The Pyroloxia, or gray cardinal, is partial to mesquite thickets. It crushes the mesquite pods to feed on the seeds. Buffered by outlying islands, Texas has one of the most extensive sea coasts of any state. Padre Island is an ideal place to watch seabirds of all kinds. Gulls wheel and dive. A black skimmer shadows the waves for fish. A sandpiper pokes along the beach. Life on the margin of the sea is endlessly interesting.
but then each habitat has its own special way of attracting us. From seashore to desert, from mountains to marshland, the grandeur of the Lone Star State is in the diversity of its wild creatures and wild places. Skyscrapers, parking lots, and shopping malls. Man-made America looks pretty much the same in Dallas as it does in Seattle or Baltimore. What makes each state unique is its climate and natural resources, its land forms, its wildlife. The beauty of a place is certainly what makes people want to live there, and usually what makes them come to visit. Texans are proud of their state, the oil rigs, the Alamo, the Astrodome. But taking pride in landmarks is not as important as taking pride in the land itself. Oil and gas will not last forever, but wildlife and unspoiled habitat can. Let's keep working to preserve wild Texas. I'm Marty Stauffer. Until next time, enjoy our wild America.